Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. I'm Paul Clark, and welcome to my studio. So, what have I got for you, lovely lot, today? Well, this is another one in my inspiration series, and I think this could be the first time that I've actually chosen an artist who's still alive. Now, this is someone who I was unaware of until fairly recently, until one of my students at my local classes introduced me to him. Well, not literally introduced me to him, well, you know what I mean. So, thank you, cool, sir. And his name is Milland Mullock. She lent me some really lovely books, very inspirational. Now, I know many of you who watch from India will know of him. He's hugely popular. So we're going to have a go at painting this lovely Indian villa scene inspired by his work. So come and join me and we'll paint step by step together. So, Milan Mullick is an Indian-based watercolour artist who continues to teach in his own country as well as abroad. Now, I'm a big fan of his loose and colourful approach. To me, it looks as if every brushstroke has purpose, and I love the way he leaves large areas unpainted, always leaving the viewer something to consider. Although his painting scenes are from many parts of the world, he is probably most well known for his paintings of his own country, particularly urban scenes. So. Let's have a look in more detail. So I didn't want to copy any particular painting of Millen's, so I sketched out this value study based on several of his paintings. Okay, so for today's materials, my paper is a sheet of Saunders Waterford Rough, 100% cotton, nice and thick at 300 pound, so it won't need stretching, but any decent watercolour paper will do. A lot of nice bright colours today. I have cobalt blue, phthalo blue, lemon yellow, sap green, alizarin crimson, cadmium red, cadmium orange, burnt sienna, burnt umber and Payne's grey. Just three brushes from my range, a three quarter inch flat, number 12 and number six round, and a brush not from my set, but don't tell anyone, is this half inch flat, kindly sent to me from Zen Art. And as always, the pencil sketch is free to download from my website, link in the description below. Off we go, and I'm not pre-wetting my paper today, but I'm coming in with a very watery wash of cobalt blue and bringing it down both sides of the villa. And I'm using my large flat brush for this. It's perfect for going along those straight edges like the roof. Now, my plan today is not to try and paint exactly like Millen Mullick. Of course, that would be impossible. Only he can paint like he does. The hope is simply to be inspired and influenced by his work and learn something along the way. Now, there are plenty of tutorials here on YouTube if you want to delve deeper into his painting process. OK, for the foreground here, I'm painting in all wet in wet, mixing the paint directly on the paper. Now, lots of different bright colours here. Far too many to mention, but I'll try and list them all down below. Still using my flat brush, lots of water, and just letting the paint do its thing. And you know what I'm going to say, don't fiddle. So the sky is still damp, so I'm dropping in both warm and cool colours into the semi-wet wash, letting all the paint still move and blend on the paper. And creating these soft edges should help to convince the viewer that these trees are further in the distance. So experiment with your colour choice. You don't have to match what I'm painting here. Don't be afraid of the colour. Try combinations that you've not used before. It really is the only way that you can explore the medium. Remember that coming out of your comfort zone can be a good thing.
Now I'm keeping this area in the top right hand corner fairly light because when it's dry I want to come on top with some darker palm type tree details. Now to liven up this green mix I've just dropped in a little bit of the thalo blue. And here a few blobs of clean water to force some back runs or cauliflowers. Just building up the dark values, looking for strong contrasts with the side of the villa. And here I'm flipping my flat brush on its side to get those narrower brush strokes. It just allows me to work faster, not having to keep changing to a smaller brush. And here just dabbing out with a tissue to retain some of that light. Here to create a subtle mottled effect, I'm simply tapping into the damp wash some drops of clean water. Of course, a bit of splatting for some random texture. So now we need to let this totally dry. So it's a perfect time for a short break. And as it's 10 in the morning, how about a nice cup of Darjeeling tea? So just to say, it's not always easy to give you my exact colour breakdowns. As you can see, my palette is very rarely clean. So I'm often picking up other colours into the mix. Next for the villa, and I'm using my flat brush again with a very watery mix. And again, I'll list all the colours I'm using below. But feel free to use any colours you like. And I'm just softening the bottom here with some sort of cleanish water. So blue and orange are complementary colours sitting on the opposite side of the colour wheel. So they're always going to look great together. Okay, next for these pillars, and I'm starting off with a very cool shadow with a mix of Payne's Grey and Cobalt Blue. Then to create a little warm contrast, I'm dropping in some Cadmium Orange straight in wet in wet. And now wet on dry to create some hard edge details up here in these trees. I'm holding my brush at the end to get a lot of nice quick movement. And again using the edge of my flat brush and of course dropping in some more splats. So here, a little negative painting technique. I'm painting the shape of the lighter grasses below by adding in these dark values above, then softening the top with clean water and then dropping in any colours into the wet.
lean water here, then the paint straight into the wet, but also painting further down the wash to get some harder edges. And here I'm using the wooden end of my brush to scratch and score in these grass details. And just darkening these trunks here. And now I've switched to my smaller number six brush for these details. Wetting again with some clean water, then I'm dropping in some nice strong dark values to create some contrast and help those pillars stand out. Okay, now for the palms over here, using the smaller flat brush, I'm again using the shadow side to form the lighter shaped palm. Lots of short, quick, dabby strokes, lifting off to create the tapered end. And now I've switched to my number six brush. And with quick strokes, you can pick up some texture of the paper and get this lovely dry brush technique. And here a much wetter and warmer tone. I've noticed in a lot of his paintings he tends to leave a lot of gaps in his trunks and sometimes doesn't paint them all the way down to the bottom. It's, it's always good to leave something for the viewer to imagine. And here a much lighter watery wash to suggest a tree much further back in the distance. Number six brush again here, just putting in these little flicks and little suggestions of foliage here and there. And now for some shadows on the villa, and I'll always use a darker version of the colour that I'm painting on top of, rather than just use a grey, which will have so little life to it. And just softening with clean water so it blends naturally into the foreground below. Now for the shadow under the roof, I'm starting with a warm colour with some burnt umber. But then I'm going to be dropping in a cool value underneath. And exactly the same with this smaller roof over here.
Now for these shutters, and I thought it'd be nice to coordinate with the colour of the building on the left, but you could paint these any colour you like. Details on the roof here, and less is more. You don't have to fill in every tile and every detail. So if you're interested in learning more about Millen Mullick's painting process, there are many very good informative videos here on YouTube. Now, he has a line which he often uses, which I have to say made me chuckle, and that is, shut up and paint, which resonated with me because I think it's all too easy to overcomplicate things and self-analyse what we're doing. For me, the real way to learn is by actually doing it, rather than spending hours on swatching and making colour charts. Just have a go. Sure, you'll have disasters, but I've said this a zillion times. You'll learn nothing if you don't make mistakes. So, shut up and paint. Okay, so now for probably my favourite bit of the painting is these final details with a nice dark value which really pulls the whole painting together. Now I'm still trying to paint these quickly and loosely, just trying to suggest detail without being too literal. Always trying to paint things with as few brush strokes as possible. And here on the wrought iron gate, nice wobbly lines. It always adds character. It is always a challenge to know when exactly to stop, but I'm just finishing off with a few little touches here and there, a few little leaves, a few little suggestions of foliage. And here I just want to bring out that pyramid shape on the top of the pillar, so I'm just surrounding the top with a little bit of dark green value. Okay, so what I've done here is I've just mixed in a little bit of pink watercolour into my white gouache just to paint in these opaque little flowers. And I'm looking for some darker areas to paint them on top of. And then finally some gooey white gouache straight from the tube 
just for these lovely little finishing highlights. And maybe a few more little daisies here and there. There we go, all done, and this one in about three hours, and my little tribute to a very inspiring artist. So I'm going to put after Melinda Mullock. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did, and you'll shut up and paint. Don't be so rude. No, 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 that's what he says. Yeah. As always, just make it your own, splash around with the paint, and of course, enjoy the experience. And please don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't already. It is free. Leave a comment. I do read every single one. Can't always reply to them all. And of course, I'll look forward to seeing you all again next week for another Watercolour Wednesday. Have a great week, everyone. Bye for now. <laughs>